So um, the third version of the matching model uh, is going to be the job rationing model. And so in terms of wage function, we're going to stick to the assumption made in the rigid wage model because we want to get enough fluctuations um, over the business cycle. We are not going to revert to bargaining, which leads to wages that are too flexible. So we are going to assume a rigid wage. So the wage is going to be some scalar omega, productivity A, with an elasticity gamma, gamma strictly less than one because we want some wage rigidity. Okay. Now, where the model is going to um, so the product rate function is going to be um, the difference between the job rationing model and the rigid weight model. So remember, rigid weight model has a linear production function, and we know that what that does is that it does a labor demand that's perfectly elastic with respect to tightness. That's horizontal. We'll see that that's a key feature that makes the rigid wage model having no lack of jobs uh, whatsoever. Whereas here, we're going to introduce in the job rationing model a concave uh, production function. And so it's going to look something like output is productivity times number of producers to the power of alpha, where alpha, the shape of the production function is strictly less than one. And you know, you might recognize on the job rationing model. That's essentially the model that we've been using so far. It's, it's the most general of this model. It allows for a concave production function and uh, you know rigid uh, rigid wages. So that actually this model is what I developed uh, in my PhD thesis, um, and and, and um, the model got published eventually in uh, 2012 in the American Economic Review. So the, the article that describes the model is assigned as a reading, but that's the work that I did um, during my PhD. Uh, and so in that model, this, that you can see as a third generation uh, matching model, then you have uh, two important and uh, very useful properties there. Two good properties. Um, so one, and that for the reason uh, that Bob Hall highlighted in 2005 article. So one, because we have a rigid wage, we are going to have a realistic. fluctuations in unemployment. And so by realistic, I mean that uh, the fluctuations are large enough. And that's something that we saw when we studied unemployment fluctuations. If you have some wage rigidity, you can match the elasticity of uh, labor market tightness with respect to productivity that we see uh, in the data. Okay. And the second property, which would be the focus of, uh, of this lecture, is that <coughs> because we have a concave production function, the model will feature uh, the model will feature some uh, job rationing. Uh, and so as a result, for instance, the model is uh, consistent with the presence of uh, worker queues in bad times. Um, so what that means is that because we have job rationing, another way to say it is that Not all unemployment 
is uh, frictional. Another way to say that, just in a different way, is that unemployment does not vanish if uh, matching frictions disappear. So uh, either if recruiting cost go to zero, even if recruiting costs go to zero, there would still be some unemployment in the model. That's just because sometimes firms just don't want to hire all the workers that are looking for jobs. And similarly, if the effort that job seekers put into their job search goes to infinity, which usually means that the matching friction is not an issue, uh, again here, um, not all unemployment is going to disappear. You know, if, if workers desperately want a job, but if firms don't want to hire them, these people are not going to have a job. Okay, uh, and so what we'll see is that in fact in this model we'll be able to uh, separate unemployment in two categories. Total unemployment is going to be the sum of frictional unemployment, which is the unemployment that's created by the presence of matching frictions, you know, which make it more costly for workers to for firms to hire workers and therefore reduce employment plus rationing unemployment, which is going to be uh, a lack of job. So that's what we're going to see.